Shane do some of these. You know?
13th is Santa Lucia Day.
Good afternoon. My name is Heidi Eatma, and I'm the Interim Executive Dean of Instruction at BTC. On behalf of the Interim President and Chief Academic Officer, Walter Hudsick, the Board of Trustees, Dr. Bradley Smith, Debbie All, and Richard Kaiser, and the Administration of Bellingham Technical College, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the Fall 2021 Nurses Pinning and Graduation. First of all, welcome graduates. I'm excited to be able to be here in person with you today. And while I can't see the smiles behind your masks, I can see them in your eyes. Secondly, to the family and friends who are watching online, welcome. I'm sure you are excited to see your loved ones graduate today. We are glad you're here to share in this special moment. And finally, welcome faculty and staff. You have successfully guided these students on their educational journey and helped them achieve their goals. We thank you all for your hard work. This cohort of students has accomplished so much. You have success, they began their education winter quarter 2020, a few months before the pandemic hit and completed their degrees almost entirely under COVID restrictions. During their time at BTC, these students have witnessed the rollout of the vaccine, obtained hands-on experience at the vaccine clinic held on BTC's campus, and endured regular testing as they completed clinical rotations in various community settings. I myself received my vaccination from a BTC nursing student, and by the way, it didn't hurt they were well taught. In my mind, you were already frontline heroes. To say you've had a unique experience would be an understatement. You have truly persevered during difficult times. I admire the resilience and determination that has brought you here today to celebrate the completion of your nursing degree. I'm excited to see you entering this respected field of work. Nursing is a noble profession, and not everyone is cut out to be a nurse. I applaud you. I personally couldn't do the work that you do. I don't do well with needles. Today is about you and your accomplishments. Congratulations, graduates. And now I will turn the mic over to Julie Sams, Dean of Nursing and Allied Health. We are all here today to celebrate this group of graduating nurses. I am so excited to see this group graduate. They have weathered adversity and shown incredible resilience and persistence. This cohort is the last group in our program that was in nursing school before the pandemic began. I never would have predicted back in March of 2020 that we would still be under the pandemic cloud today. COVID-19 and the resulting global pandemic has undeniably changed the healthcare world that these graduate nurses are about to join. What an interesting time to be a new nurse. I've had a lot of people ask me if being in the middle of a global pandemic dampens the enthusiasm of people training to be nurses or thinking about nursing as a career. I'm sure there's some of that, but the overwhelming answer is no. This is what we do. We work with sick and vulnerable populations. There's always some risk to us related to that work, a risk that we've learned how to reduce and minimize, but that we can never completely eliminate. Modern nursing evolved from the Crimean War, where our most famous predecessor, Florence Nightingale, went from patient to patient with comfort and caring as our primary tools and very little in the way of cure. We have a lot more tools now and a lot more technology. Nurses are experts at what they do. That often includes proficiency in equipment, in-depth knowledge of medications and treatments, and attention to pathophysiology and disease process. These things are ever-changing and evolving. That is, as it should be. Healthcare practice should shift with evolving evidence. The emergence of a new virus, like COVID-19, is a reminder that the foundational tools of nursing don't ever really change. As nurses, our fundamental responsibility is to provide care and comfort, even when there is no cure available. Hope, not for the outcome, but that we are not alone, that we are cared for. Nurses are the embodiment of hope. This is particularly true in dark times when we are sick and vulnerable. 
that light of hope can carry us through. At this moment, almost two years into a global pandemic, the world is in desperate need of hope. Normally, we would all be sitting together in a lovely auditorium, watching our nursing graduates walk across the stage and receive their nursing pins. Those pins are a long tradition and are unique to each school, signifying achievement and marking each student as a graduate nurse, no longer our students, but our peers. This quarter, for the first time since we went remote back in the spring of 2020, we are here in our auditorium with our audience at home, watching at a distance. It's a little thing, but it's progress. To our students, today you are graduating. Soon you will sit for the NCLEX and become registered nurses. And when you get out there in your first nursing job, you will be overwhelmed by how much you don't know. I would like to suggest to you that this is not a weakness. It is, in fact, a superpower. When we don't know, we look at things more carefully, consider things more fully. And you will quickly find that in nursing, as in life, things often don't go according to plan. Nurses are one of the most trusted professions by the public. It is because we are superheroes. We don't have super healing powers or super emotional resilience, not any more than anyone else. What we do have is the superpower of observation the superpower of asking questions, the superpower of critical thinking, and the superpower of radical compassion. So cherish what you don't know. Keep it close to your heart. Because in nursing, as in life, it is when we start thinking that we know that we get into trouble. Once we stop critically observing, stop asking questions, stop listening. This isn't the end of your education. This is just the first rung on a tall ladder that you will climb for years to come. That ladder of knowledge never ends. When you first started this program, I said that we would teach you the skills you needed to become nurses. I trust that we have done that. But I also said that becoming a nurse would fundamentally change who you are. We are not just nurses at work. Nursing is not just a career. Being a nurse is part of who you are. There is much work to be done, and we are in desperate need of hope and light. Your care will be a gift to our community and the world. Thank you. And thank you to the faculty and their tireless work to train our nursing students. Thank you to the staff who keep the program running behind the scenes. And now I'd like to introduce our faculty speaker, Tom Carson. Thank you, Julie. My name is Tom Carson. I'm one of the clinical faculty here at Bellingham Technical College. Welcome to each of the graduates and those following along on Zoom. Wow, how exciting. We are actually in Settlemeyer Hall, albeit in a hybrid format. Thanks for the suggestion to have some version of an in-person pinning. Congratulations to each of you. You have put in long hours and worked really hard to be here. Each of you made a commitment and sacrifices to pursue this dream. Each of you had a choice between studying and going to Zoom meetings and previously real classes. Remember them? You consistently over time chose the nursing profession as your priority. It has not always been easy. In fact, it has been downright challenging. And I imagine it has brought tears and a question to that commitment in one way or another to each of you. I commend you. Also, congratulations to all of your family and friends who has supported you on this endeavor. You too share in some of the excitement of seeing your graduate here today. You encourage them along this path, seeing their graduate. You encourage them along this path, in many cases freed up space for them to study and attend Zoom meetings or just have some quiet time. Students, please applaud your significant others. Thank you to all the nursing faculty and dedicated staff at BTC for addressing all the unique, shall I say, opportunities that the pandemic has brought. We learn new definitions of words such as heavy lift, pivot, resiliency, and hybrid, to name a few. Through it all, each of them has been committed to student success and your progress towards graduation. Your being here is direct evidence of that. Their commitment has never wavered from that goal. I'd like to recount a recent conversation that I had with my cousin who is a yoga instructor. She's recently returned from a retreat arranged in Mexico. 
I asked Rebecca, how was your trip? Rebecca, ah, Mexico. Tom, you know I had planned for this retreat over the past two years. I felt excited, but also anxious. I didn't feel prepared enough. I wasn't at my optimal physical health. I wasn't taking my harmonium, which was her musical instrument, something that I realize makes me feel safe. When I got to the retreat center, I slipped into comparison thinking, measuring myself with some unfounded standard with other teachers there. And so my mantra became, give up your perfect offering. The line is from a familiar song by Leonard Cohen entitled Anthem. In the refrain, Cohen writes, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack. A crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. Working with my own perfectionism, I would show up and give my best offering each day. I had the opportunity to do this when I felt sick, when there was outside disturbance, when the room was buzzing with mosquitoes, when I stumbled with a cue or my voice wasn't strong. This is a gift that has been given to me since I began teaching yoga. I stepped into teaching as an older person with a body that was already impacted by injury and age. I don't know all the Sanskrit names of all the poses. I don't have all the typical yoga clothes. I can't do some of the more athletic poses. And when COVID impacted our world and sent students on long, online for yoga, I wondered if I could enter this teaching world. Bright lights and up close zoom rendering of my face. I'm happy to say that most of my time and my desire to be present in the world and offer my gifts, however small, is what keeps me going. I remind myself always that I can continue to learn and grow as a teacher, and that I need, do not need to know everything now or ever. I stop myself when the perfectionism creeps in and remember that I, like everything, am here to do my best, to show up, to shine my light that every teacher will draw students who need what that teacher has to offer. So I ask you today, if you are holding back your offering because you think you are not ready enough, good enough, or anything enough, step up, show up, get into the game. You are enough and the world needs your offering. No matter what that offering is, no matter how old you are, no matter where you live, no matter who you serve. Give up your perfect offering and give us what you got. I hope this analogy is not lost on you. As new graduate nurses, what are we if we are not lifelong learners and more importantly, lifelong teachers? What are the three most important words that the nurse wants to hear? Alert, oriented, and ambulatory. Now it is my great privilege and honor to introduce Ruben Perez Jr. as the student keynote speaker. Start here. Hello everyone, my name is Ruben. It is an honor to speak today for this cohort. I'm glad I get to see all of you in person just like we met in the beginning of the program. I'm happy that our families and friends can be here from afar supporting us as they have been um, as they have been through these last two years. This cohort of mine has been through a lot, and that is an understatement. This cohort has not only been through a pandemic, but we've had everything that could possibly go wrong with us go wrong. I want a quote from my favorite movie of all time, Forrest Gump. One day it started raining, and it ain't quit for four months. We've been through every kind of rain there is. A little bit of stinging rain, and big old fat rain. Rain that flew in sideways, and sometimes rain even seemed to come straight up from underneath. Shoot, it even rained at night. And that was nursing school for us. Our first quarter together, we all failed our doses calculation test. Boy, you should have seen our faces. But thankfully, it was all technical difficulties. We had substitute teachers filling us, filling us in for the majority of the time, and then the pandemic came and taken, uh, took us out. For, took us out, out of clinical rotations. Just like in Forrest Gump, except it wasn't rain, it was events that kept impacting us. And it wasn't just four months, it was two years. 
Going virtual, we all felt disconnected from the world and from our learning experiences we could have had. It got to a point where we all feared of killing the patient via the game. Don't worry, that fear is long and gone now because we're confident and competent in becoming great nurses. Every quarter was a new challenge. It was hard on us physically, mentally, and emotionally. To make things even worse, just as soon as we can see the finish line in the beginning of the sixth quarter, the exam questions got even harder. We were all struggling to get through our four exams, but we passed. In the meantime, we tried to keep in touch with each other as much as possible, even though most of it was via Zoom, text, Facebook, and Canvas. We lost a few on the way. We lost countless hours of sleep waiting for exam scores, or waking up to a gazillion Canvas notifications being about messages or last minute changes. Some of us lost ourselves trying to keep up with school, work, and just having a life. But during all of that rain, there were some great things we got to experience. Some of us began this program as parents. Some of us learned how to love themselves. Some of us are not nowhere near relationship yet. And some of us are now graduating as new parents. Congratulations, everyone, for taking it day by day. Most of all, I am proud to say we started as strangers, but are now leaving as family. I want to thank all the BTC's nursing staff for pivoting during COVID to help us work with patients again. Much gratitude to my homies Tiffany, Tom, Kate, Rika, Todd, Diana, and the list goes on and on. Nursing school has taught me a lot of things, but what I take away the most from this program is that we all, we all have the risks of all the diseases we learned. But really, nursing school has taught us how resilient, strong, and bold we are. Thank you to everyone for supporting, celebrating, and working with us through our challenges with school and in our lives. Several of us will be starting our RN to BSN program and residency soon. Some of us already have job offers lined up. I wish everyone success in their lives and careers and success in taking their NCLEX test. I look forward to working with all of you in the nursing field and becoming the best nurse leaders that the world has yet to see. I hope everyone has a wonderful winter break. I'm excited to see how we continue to change our lives and what we will accomplish in five years. Thank you all for letting us be a chapter in your life. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Tiffany Schumann and I'm joined by Kate Scott. We are the lead nursing instructors for the sixth quarter of the program and have the honor of moving forward with pinning these nurse graduates. Justin Averett. Justin says, nursing is my way to give back to the community and the profession that allows me to best utilize my skills. I love the outdoors and becoming an RN is my first step towards flight nurse and transitioning into wilderness medicine. I'd like to give a special thanks to Casey, my friends and my family for supporting me through this endeavor. Ashley Benham. Ashley says, I became a nurse as part of my continuing education in healthcare. I look forward to providing holistic healthcare to patients during transitional events. I will be pursuing my bachelor's through Washington Governor's University. <laughs> Becky Brown. Becky says, for as long as I can remember, I have always wanted to be a nurse. When my dad became sick with pancreatitis during my senior year of high school, I was the one that would hook him up to his TPN and dispense his medications. Life is a funny way of working out, and I became a mother and wife before finding the time to pursue my dream. Once my kids became old enough for school, it was time to attain my dreams. Since starting the nursing program, I have been asked where I see myself after graduation. Immediately following this program, I plan to start work at a local hospital in their residency program. I also plan to attend a BSN program within the first year of graduating. I don't have a specific field that I wish to work in. However, I would love to work at Harborview Medical Center in Seattle. After my brief stay there a little over three years ago, 
I have made it a goal of mine to return and work alongside some of the nurses that took care of me, whether that be in the acute care setting or in trauma ICU. None of this would have been possible if I didn't have my husband and best friend supporting me. Throughout the entirety of the nursing program and my prerequisites, he has stood by me, cheering me on through periods when self-doubt and fear entered my head and I felt I would never make it. My kids have been a driving force in this accomplishment as well. Having them watch me working day and night to achieve this has been one of the many reasons why I never gave up. Lily and Finley, I know life has been hard having mama in school full time, but I promise to make up for it. Congratulations, Becky. Amanda Bueno. As long as I could remember, I've always known I wanted to be a nurse. I have a big heart and I just want to be able to provide care for others. My ongoing goal is to make a positive impact in people's lives. I plan on getting my BSN and my dream is to work in behavioral health or hospice. My ongoing goal is to make a positive impact in people's lives. I want to thank God for his grace and I want to thank my husband, family and friends and cohort for their support. Congratulations, Amanda. <laughs> Emily Fulbright. Emily says, I was inspired by my mother to become a nurse and specifically focus on vulnerable populations in the community. I have a passion for harm reduction and throughout the nursing program, I continued volunteering with the health department's syringe exchange program. There, I have learned that sometimes the best nursing care occurs when you meet people where they are at. In order to continue exploring how the social detriments of health correlates with the health and well-being of patients of diverse backgrounds, I plan to further my education and obtain my BSN. In January 2022, I began the BSN program at the University of Washington Bothell as an AHEC scholar specializing in progressing healthcare in rural and underserved communities. I owe a big special thank you to my supportive family and everyone in this cohort for getting through the nursing program together. Congratulations, Emily. Sage Jones. Sage went into the nursing with the intent to care for those who have fallen through the cracks in our healthcare system. She wants to pursue emergency care and community health here in Bellingham. Sage hopes to be an active union member and fight to improve both the profession of nursing and conditions for the community as a whole. She's grateful for the support of her family and her chosen family who have been incredibly supportive throughout the difficult process of going through the nursing school during the pandemic. Congratulations, Sage. Melissa Markin. Melissa says, I humbly consider my journey into nursing a calling. I am honored to serve alongside my sisters and brothers on a dedicated healthcare team to answer to the medical needs of our community. Special thanks to my family and friends and the best cohort ever, for I could have never made it to graduation day without them. Congratulations, Melissa. <laughs> Ruben Perez Jr. Ruben says, at a young age, I realized that sunny days wouldn't be special if it wasn't for rain. Joy wouldn't feel so good if it wasn't for pain. And that life can leave you physically, mentally, and emotionally scarred. I became a nurse to be someone's umbrella when it's pouring. To help focus on the goal, not so much the pain. And when life has dealt its cards, if the hand is hard, together we'll mend their health and heart. I will continue my education to get my BSN. My goal moving forward is to end up in the emergency medicine in the next few years and prosper in that department. Becoming a nurse is drastic for me. I want to thank the nursing program, my cohort, friends and family. Thank you to everyone. It was an honor to be in a fraction of your lives. Oh, and Jimmy, can I have my pen back please? Congratulations, Ruben. Joel Palmerinki. Joel says, I landed on nursing as a second career to continue helping people as my life's work. I chose nursing because it is challenging, critical to the community, and enables you to treat people when they are having their worst day. 
I hope to become a proficient provider in an emergency department and gain my CEN and advanced life-saving certifications, as well as advance my degree to BSN in the near future. I want to take this time to say thank you to my love and partner, Shannon, who helped me to decide that this is the career for me and helped me get through those tough times during the course. My son, who showed understanding when I needed to study and couldn't play, and the staff here at BTC who showed me the way through the program, launching us into our new adventure. I look forward to working with my amazing classmates in the real world soon. We are done, guys. Congratulations, Joel. Laurel Scott. Laurel says, I am beyond thrilled to embark upon my new career as a nurse. I have worked in restaurants for more than half of my life, and while I love the day-to-day -day interactions with people and making their time out as special an occasion as possible, I've wanted to do something that feels more meaningful to me for quite some time. After participating in an internship at a birth clinic in Bali during my undergrad, I knew that nursing, and specifically labor and delivery nursing, was the path forward for me. I look forward to being able to assist the birthing population through some of the most momentous experiences of their lives. I am eternally grateful to my family, especially my mother, sister, and grandmother, my study group, my friends, and my amazing cohort for all of the support they've given me on this journey. I would have not made it this far without all of the love, support, and encouragement I've received. I've taken a long, winding, non-traditional road to get here, but I'm elated to finally be clearing this first hurdle and looking forward to starting my career and furthering my education. Congratulations, Laurel. Tim Sheldon. I have a background in EMS as a paramedic and nursing was the next logical step in advancing my medical career. I hope to work in the ER and if I can subject myself to another few years of school, get my master's degree. I spend the majority of my free time outdoors backpacking and fishing here in the beautiful North Cascades. First, I'd like to thank my dogs, Otis and Olive, for always keeping my family's hands sanitized during the pandemic. Big hugs to my mom, who has been a nurse for many years. Thanks for all the words of wisdom and that quarter of tuition when my financial aid ran out. Thanks to my daughter, Penelope, for keeping me pointed in the right direction, and a massive thank you to my partner in crime, Haley. I couldn't have done this without you guys, and congrats to my whole class for making it through nursing school during a pandemic. Congratulations, Tim. <laughs> Catherine Thiessen. Catherine says, My hopes are to work with parents in my community during times of love and transition as they learn to care for and navigate their new families as a postpartum nurse. Thank you to my own family and boyfriend for the support, patience, and care they have given me through my schooling. I love you guys. Congratulations, Catherine. Jimmy Van Tran. Jimmy says, I've decided to pursue a career in nursing because of my desire to help others in need to be that person you can trust and be supported during your darkest time, to provide for my community and make a difference in every patient I meet. They may not remember my name, but I hope they remember how it felt being cared for. My career goals moving forward is to land a critical care position in the hospital setting. With some more experience, I hope to pursue nursing and emergency medicine and work in a trauma hospital. Along the way, I would be pursuing my BSN and perhaps my MSN if life takes me in that direction. I would like to say a special thanks to my family and friends. You have given me unconditional love and support over the years that will not be forgotten. Thank you to the BTC nursing staff for guiding us during pandemic and leading us to where we are right now, graduate nurses. Congratulations, Jimmy. Tanner Weymouth. I chose to become a nurse to serve my community and give back to people. I wanted a career I could be prideful of. My career goals moving forward are to secure a job at St. Joe's Medical Center and complete my BSN. Special thanks to my friends and family. Congratulations, Tanner. Hannah Williams. Hannah says, 
I am becoming a nurse because I am passionate about patient advocacy and fostering equity, justice, and safety in healthcare. I first felt the deep desire to become a nurse while volunteering as a labor doula in Portland, Oregon. I was awestruck by the knowledge, skill, compassion, and collaboration of the hospital's nursing team and knew in my heart at that moment that is where I needed to be. My goals after graduation are to pursue a Bachelor of Science in Nursing and to build upon my skills working as a nurse in a hospital residency program. One day, I hope to provide inclusive reproductive care to families and individuals as a certified nurse midwife. Special thanks to my partner, Jeff, and our six-year-old son, Atlas, for their continued love and patience with me during this program. To my parents, my Aunt Heidi, and my close family for being there, not only through moments of joy, but moments of immense self-doubt. Thank you for always believing in me. Lastly, thanks to my amazing friend, Emily, who I've grown close to throughout this program and for the wonderful cohort I've been blessed with. Congratulations, Hannah. Heather Wiley. Becoming a nurse gives me the ability to do good in a world that can be so hard. I am passionate about helping people and making a positive difference in their lives. My goal is to become a pediatric nurse at Seattle Children's Hospital after finishing my nurse residency at Skagit Valley Hospital in the medical and pediatric care unit. I am committed to advocating for children's mental health and hope to one day make that my specialty. I would not be here today if it wasn't for my dad. Thank you for never giving up on me and being my rock. Congratulations, Heather. Heather Zaysha. I'm excited to be a nurse because I love helping people, learning, teaching, and science. Nursing is a wonderful combination of all of those things I love to spend my time doing. I'm looking forward to developing my nursing practice so that I am of service to my local community and underserved communities locally and abroad. I would like to thank my husband who has supported me in this journey, making many delicious dinners, picking up all the slack, and cheering me on. I'd like to thank my kids who have adjusted to our new and dramatically different lives as I pursued this dream. Also my instructors who genuinely cared that I succeeded and worked so hard to reinvent the program and keep it running through a global pandemic. And finally, my cohort who always had my back if I needed help. I know that each of us will go forward and make a positive impact in many lives. Congratulations, Heather. And now, and now I would like to introduce Heidi Eatma, who will be conferring the degrees. Will the back row please rise? There is only one official act left, the con actual conferring of degrees. I have the distinct honor with the authority vested in me by the State Board of Community and Technical Colleges and granted to me by the Board of Trustees of Bellingham Technical College. I confer upon each of you the degree of Associate in Nursing. You are now graduated and may symbolically move your tassels from the right side to the left side. Congratulations, graduates.